Now we're going to talk about some interesting occurrences in operant conditioning. Um, and, and those are that um, things that are trained can be untrained. This actually occurs in classical conditioning as well. Um, extinction and the idea of spontaneous recovery. So, um, just like in classical conditioning, um, except there's a difference. Remember that in classical conditioning, extinction means that the conditioned stimulus is no longer followed by the unconditioned stimulus. In operant learning, extinction means that a previously reinforced behavior is no longer followed by reinforcers, right? So one cool thing that happens in operant conditioning, extinction, is what is called an extinction burst. The overall effect of a disappearance in reinforcement is that the frequency of the behavior is, re is reduced, but the immediate effect when the reinforcement stops is often a very abrupt increase in the behavior trying to get the reinforcement or reward. I'm trained to some extent in applied behavioral analysis which is sort of what Super Nanny does on TV. What happens when the mother is told to start ignoring the child when the child misbehaves? At first, the child's misbehavior and attempts for negative attention increase dramatically. This is the hardest time for the mother to continue the course. However, if the mother continues in spite of the child's increased attempts for attention, the child will ultimately decrease or cease usage of negative behaviors to seek attention. Okay. Another effect that may happen with extinction is that people try other things to get their reinforcement. If at first you don't succeed, try something else. Um, and so they'll, they'll, they'll try other things to get the food or the candy or whatever it may be. But normally the something else will be something similar to the traditional reinforced behavior. Perhaps you see how this could be useful in shaping behavior, but note that the traditional behavior may be extinguished if the learner does not approximate the wished behavior and get reinforced in due time. Now you also may have heard of people regressing to a more primitive or childlike behavior when under great stress or trauma. I know I have, you probably have too. Um, I. In, in a small way, this is what we do when we cry. Uh, I'm not saying we shouldn't. I'm just saying it, it's, a, it's a very small regression. Imagine this idea in terms of conditioning. In operant conditioning, after one behavior has been extinguished and a new behavior has been reinforced, there is the possibility of resurgence. If behavior is not reinforced readily or begins to be extinguished, learners may regress to previously reinforced behaviors. As with classical conditioning, a similar effect to spontaneous recovery may occur with operant conditioning as well. If either behavior A or behavior B are reinforced again, behavior will return fully. Now we're going to look at some other simple schedules. We saw the four main types of reinforcement schedules. These are other possibilities that can be used um, and we are going to go through them rather quickly. Um, a good question that you're probably asking hopefully right now is will this be on the test? Um, the the four 
um, that I talked about previously will be on the test. Um, the simple schedules, um, I will try to seek main ideas and I will um, try to point them out to you um, in preparing you for um, for the test. What I don't want you to do is to try to memorize every single thing about each one of these. Um, I don't have them memorized. Um, and they are not used that commonly. So I want you to sort of listen, capture the main idea, jot down some notes, but be less stressed and pressured about this. All right, first we have the fixed duration schedule. It involves reinforcement after a specified period of time, non-continuously. That being the key thing, non-continuously. Imagine being rewarded after every piano practice with milk and cookies. It doesn't happen all day, but if you put in your 30 minutes of piano practice, you know that you'll be reinforced. So it's an every now and then sort of thing, but you know when you do it, you get reinforced. The variable duration schedule is similar, except that a child will be reinforced as long as they practice for an amount of time approximating the desired time allotment, 20, 30, or 45 minutes. Some of you may be lucky enough to have jobs that use non-contingent reinforcement schedules. Um, in a fixed time schedule, you're rewarded after a certain period of time regardless of what behavior you show during that time. Can you guess what variable time schedules are? Of course, they involve reinforcement after a varying period of time regardless of what behavior is shown. Progressive schedules alter their rules for contingency change in a systematic way. In a progressive ratio schedule, the reinforcement for a behavior typically increases in a predetermined way, often immediately following each re reinforcement. The progression in the ratio is either arithmetic or geometric. So either the number of times the behavior must occur to be reinforced changes or the reinforcement gets smaller. Let me say that again. Either the number of times the behavior must occur to be reinforced changes or the reinforcement gets smaller. Both may happen, making the learner work harder for less until the behavior declines or stops entirely. This point is called the break point. Ever been on the phone with your cable company? How long will you wait to talk to an actual person? You know that someone will eventually pick up the phone, right? Are you willing to wait that long? What is your break point? There's also the idea of stretching the ratio, which describes how a person who may be continually reinforced at the beginning of learning will eventually do a behavior hundreds of times for their reinforcement. This occurs slowly by the trainer increasing the amount of the ratio slowly over time rather than a, a noticeable, sizable increase all at once. If the increase is too rapid, though, something similar to a breakpoint may occur called ratio strain, wherein the tendency to perform will break down and be extinguished. Think about workers who grumble about being overworked and underpaid. they are experiencing a stretching of their ratio.